rise and join us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I'd like to start with a prayer, please. Heavenly Father, we beseech your divine guidance in this meeting. Keep us ever mindful of our obligation. Grant us, dear Lord, wisdom, tolerance, and courage that we may well serve our county and fulfill our trust. Amen. Uh, we do have uh, minutes. I will make a motion to approve. Second. Moved and second. Any discussion? Hearing none, roll call, please. Swedek? Yes. Hudson? Yes. Hambly? Yes. Uh, we do have uh, next agenda item is public comment regarding pending resolutions. Anyone here from the public want to talk about one of the resolutions we're passing today? Hearing none, we'll move on to the next order of business, which are our resolutions. Uh, Andy Conrad's office, county engineer, uh, for him is Dan Becker. Good morning, Dan. Good morning. Good morning. Nice to see all of you. Oh, sorry, I forgot my glasses. I can't see anything. Okay, I've got uh, So it's four. not so nice to see us now that you have your glasses on? <laughs> well, you know. <laughs> you look great blurry, yeah. Okay, uh, I've got four resolutions for your consideration. First resolution is the uh, determination to... Uh, dispose of some unneeded equipment from the Dinah County Engineer's Office. Uh, the second is for approval of the annual County Highway System Mileage Certification Report. Uh, the third resolution is authorizing the Dinah County Engineer to purchase a New Year trailer. And the fourth resolution is accepting and awarding the bids for the 2022 Medina County Aggregate Bid. And then we also have the weekly permits. I will make a motion to approve the four resolutions. Second. Moved and second. Any discussion? Seeing none, roll call, please. Swedek? Yes. Hudson? Yes. Hambly? Yes. Thank you. Very Thanks, good. Dan. Thanks, Dan. You look pretty good, too. Yeah. <laughs> uh, sanitary engineer, Jeremy Sinko. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. good morning, Jeremy. Oh, one resolution for consideration today, and that is the second resolution declaring the necessity of constructing a section of sanitary sewer on Ryan Road from the southwestern property line of 5556 Wagon Trail to the northern property line of 5974 Ryan Road in Lafayette Township, and that's part of that assessed sanitary sewer. I'll make a motion to approve. Second. Moved and second. Any discussion? Seeing none, roll call, please. Swedek? Yes. Hudson? Yes. Hambly? Yes. Thanks. 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 Uh, Holly Murin, our Human Resources Director. Good morning, Holly. Good morning. Good morning. On our personal changes resolution today, we have a rehire and sanitary uh, date correction and job and family services, a promotion in sanitary, two rate increases, one at job and family services and one in sanitary, leave of absence at job and family services, a return from leave at job and family services, and a retirement at sanitary. I'll make a motion to approve. Second. Moved and second. Any questions? Seeing none, roll call, please. Swedek? Yes. Hudson? Yes. Hambly? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Next we have uh, Scott Miller, County Administrator. Good morning, Scott. Good morning. Good morning, Scott. I just have one resolution for you today. Uh, this is a resolution for the, uh, the revising Medina County Comprehensive Economic Development Strategy. Um, the CEDS uh, Stakeholder Committee has recommended a revision to the SEEDS plan to add a project in the project section regarding 700 Liverpool Drive, which is a large manufacturing facility that will bring significant jobs to Medina County. Uh, this revision will allow for a variety of grant applications at both the federal and state level, uh, which require local comprehensive plans to align with the grant applications. And this resolution is just approving that amendment to the plan. I'll make a motion to approve. Second. Moved and second. Any discussion? Seeing none, roll call, please. Swedek? Yes. Hudson? Yes. Hambly? Yes. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks Scott. Steve Bastian, our facilities director. Good morning. Good morning, Steve. Good morning, Steve. How are you this morning? I have one resolution for your consideration. Um, it is the approval for the agreement of architectural design and engineering services for the Medina County Human Services uh, pedestrian bridge and southern entry where we have water intrusion coming in. I'll make a motion to approve. Second. Moved and second. Any discussion? Once this is done, are there going to be any other significant 
maintenance needs out at the building? On the Human Service Center building? Right. Uh, none at this time. Uh, we do need have a uh, backup generator that will need to be um, addressed at some point in time, but nothing uh, significant. That, that exists currently? It exists currently, yeah. Okay. We just, uh, it's getting old, and uh, we'll be looking at that at some point in time. It won't be as large of a project as uh, the walls have been, plus this bridge. Okay, very good. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Take that roll call, please. Swedek? Yes. Hudson? Yes. Hambly? Yes. Thank you. Thank Thanks. You. And Amy Lyon Gavin, our uh, assistant county administrator. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I have uh, 10 resolutions for your consideration this morning. Uh, the first one is amending the appropriation measure resolution. The second is amending the 2021 appropriations resolution by transferring appropriations. The third is expenditure adjustments for various funds. The fourth is cash transfers for various funds. And if I may, I'll just point out for those resolutions three and four, you'll see several of those are related to the Our Believe program. Uh, just to let you know, this is our fourth installment uh, of making these adjustments for folks. It's been 137 employees who've been able to participate. Um, over 6,500 hours and about $164,000 so far. Uh, the fifth resolution is authorizing the county auditor to transfer funds from various county department accounts to the Medina County Vehicle Maintenance Revenue Line Item. The sixth is accepting an application for the use of a procurement card for the Commissioner's IT Department. The seventh is approving an agreement with alternative paths for mental health program at the uh, Medina County Jail for calendar year 22. The eighth resolution is authorizing a contract for 2022 for uh, professional services of a beautician at the Medina County home. That's with Sandy Miller. She's been doing a great job. The ninth resolution is allowing expenses of county officials. And the tenth and final resolution for me today is approving claims for the week in the amount of six million one hundred and twenty-four thousand five hundred and thirty-four dollars and twenty-four cents. I'll make a motion to approve the ten resolutions. Second. Moved and second. Any discussions? Roll call, please. Swedek? Yes. Hudson? Yes. Hambly? Yes. Thank you. Thanks, Amy. Thanks, Amy. Uh, department updates. Greg Brown, County Home Superintendent. Good morning. This is my first one, Happy New Year. So starting out with census, we're uh, still at 40 right now, and we have two adult daycare participants. Staffing is still on everybody's mind as, as mine. Still looking for that nursing supervisor, uh, full-time and part-time second, and part-time first LPNs. Uh, can thank the commissioners for the, the boiler, especially with this weather right now. It's doing its job very well. Some of the, uh, December was once again an amazing time at the home. The generosity that was poured out from the, the residents of Medina County. Between uh, the Cloverleaf Middle School uh, gave us Christmas cards from their Yeti team. I had Girl Scouts giving cards to the residents. Made great for their, their morning, uh, Christmas morning, drinking coffee, opening up presents that were also donated. Some uh, puzzles under the tree with the cards. Um, cash donations from churches, businesses. My friends in Medina County Home uh, sponsored our Christmas meal. The Kiwanis from Brunswick, or the Brunswick Rotary did the, um, the New Year's meal. Uh, we had the Kiwanis as well. Had a garden club that put up two trees, one on the, out, on the outside of my building, one on the inside. Um, between my Facebook page and the two commissioners' newsletters, I've got pretty much all of those people in there, and I think I took up a whole page. Brian did a great job making sure I got everybody in there. Um, as far as um, masks are still in effect at the home, we're still doing really well with our protocol, and we're going to keep it that way. Have you had any incidents of COVID in the recent past? No. Residents? Yeah. Residents, no. Uh, but employees, yes. Mm -hmm. And. Uh, with our protocols in place, and uh, it's always been outside of, of work, and we've always managed to, to 
uh, catch that in time, so we're doing really well right now with that. We're going to keep it that way. Good. Yes. Sounds good. Thank you. Any other questions? Right. Thanks. Okay. Right. Thank you. Great. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, next, we have from Soil and Water District uh, Manager Eric Hang. Who, uh, this is your first time before us, isn't it? Yes, correct. Yes. So go easy on you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, welcome. Well, thank you. All right. Well, start the obvious. Uh, we have uh, the reorganization of the office with the retirement of Jim Dieter and me stepping in from the technician to the new district manager. Uh, we are also looking for a technician to replace me. Uh, I talked to uh, Nicole Lee last month at this meeting, and I reached out to her yesterday, so she should be getting that out for us. We also have our supervisor election. Uh, we have the re-election of Steve Fulton, who's been on the board since 1992. And then we have a newly elected Jake Newcomer, and uh, he operates a 550-acre uh, farm in Guilford Township. So he'll be a supervisor for us for the uh, next three-year term. Yeah, we're doing swearing in next week, right? We're doing swearing in Steve. Uh, today. Today. Actually, a little bit later. Yeah, yeah, yeah correct. And then next week, uh, you and I will swear in uh, Jake at our uh, board meeting. Yes, thank you. Uh, we recently had received two grants, one from Western Reserve Land Conservancy and Dominion Energy. Uh, they are for updating resources and public education. We're putting out uh, new banners that uh, do a little bit to help us reach the public. Uh, we do a lot of library programs and we're getting new resources pushed out where the banners will look something like this just to uh, kind of promote what our office is all about. Uh, soil health, water quality, all those things. Uh, the, that grant was for uh, $2,100 and then we also received a OEEF, uh, Ohio EPA Education Grant for $750 for macroinvertebrate sampling uh, supplies for school districts. Um, uh, we have the Ohio Envirothon coming up that's going to be, all three are in Ohio this year. We always have our Area 2 Envirothon. The State Envirothon is going to be in Area 2. And then the National Envirothon is going to be in Ohio. So that's something that's uh, pretty rare, so uh, we're excited to be a part of that. Uh, the Marathon is a high school uh, competition to teach students about uh, environment and natural resources. They have uh, five main topics, forestry, wildlife, uh, aquatic ecosystems, they have a current issue, and then a soils, which uh, our office is usually the one to teach the uh, soils part for the teams in the county. Uh, and we will be uh, volunteering office time and uh, teaching for uh, those events. Uh, we are also currently working with Chippewa Lake Village. They have uh, recently received some funds and they wanted to discuss new green infrastructure projects uh, there in the village. So uh, Abby Costello is working with them on a possible community rain garden. Uh, Abby is also putting a presentation tomorrow at the Medina Library on uh, seed starting and soil amendments. That will be at uh, 6.30 tomorrow. And then uh, last thing is, uh, last month we had the approval for our Muskingum cover crop program. Uh, producers in the Muskingum watershed can receive funds for implementing cover crops. We had 328 acres uh, approved with four participants and uh, funds of $4,341 uh, given to the district to pass out to those participants. Are those banners, uh, those are Going to like to use at conferences, conventions, that kind of stuff? Uh, yes, as well as uh, stationary displays that we oh. put up once in a while at the uh, the libraries or we have yeah. put them at the administration building or other township uh, offices. We put them up and then uh, receive in uh, public education numbers. These are from like those vertical sites. ones that you, yes. you put up. And, okay. Mm -hmm. Any questions? Nope. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Did a good job. Yep. Oh, Thank you. There you go. We weren't rough on you at all, were we? Yeah, I don't yeah. think so. Uh, commissioner's resolutions. We do have a, a resolution appointing township representatives an alternate to the Medina County uh, Council of Governments on COG enforcement. Uh, this is now uh, the uh, Jim Gardner, 
and Bill Pavlik as representatives of the Medina County Council of Governments on Drug Enforcement, and then also nominated Joe Canestraro to serve as the Township Alternate on the Medina County Council of Governments on Drug Enforcement. This would uh, appoint them to serve in those positions um, for 2022. I'll make a motion to approve. Second. Move and second. Any discussion? Now roll call, please. Swedek? Yes. Hudson? Yes. Hambly? Yes. Uh, we also have a notice of a liquor uh, permit filing. Uh, received notice of a new for Dolgen Midwest LLC doing business as Dollar General Store uh, located in, in 4901 Chippewa Road, Montville Township uh, for a C1, C2 permit class. Uh, this is uh, no actions required other than put in a public record. So, all right. Uh, next, we open it up to uh, public comment. Anyone here for the public regarding any issues? Yes. Yes. Would you please come forward? Uh, state your name, please. Hello. My name is Charles Messina, and I am a resident at Granger Lake and am uh, one of the presidents of the six HOAs at uh, Granger Lake. We have some other constituents, constituents as well from Granger uh, 4 and 5 in the back here. So the reason I'm up here today is to, uh, we heard about the potential um, water main um, line being proposed with the ARPA funds for about 1.2 million to be brought down to our community. And um, we as a community are in dire need of um, city water or water remediation for the current systems, uh, Condo 4 and 5 is in dire need of remediation of their systems. Which one are you in? I'm in uh, six. You're in six, yeah. okay. So this all stems back from a inoperating model, a non-operating model that was created back in 1971 with uh, Granger Lake leasing the lake, the land lease, from a private owner. So we have to pay on a yearly basis to a private landowner and to use the property. And that money does not get uh, be brought, brought back into the community. It goes to the private landowner. And that payment increases every, uh, every five years with inflation. And now it's to the point in 2022 where that payment is to the private landowner around $250,000 per year. So that basically makes our condos incapable of having funds to pay for major infrastructure projects like water in some cases the other HOAs are having issues with keeping up with their homes um, the roofs etc so once we heard that there was a potential to bring water to our community from the city and with the issues of condo four and five and our other condominium associations uh, if we lose a well we would be in the same situation as the other condos in regards to being on one well and having high levels of arsenic in the in the water supply. So, you know, this is come to a situation where um, the Ohio EPA is requiring, uh, has through Senate Bill 2, has increased requirements and rules and regulations of how the uh, private water systems are regulated and with monitoring of the systems and the administration of the systems it becomes very costly in some cases to run those systems and have the skill sets that we're a community of mostly retirees and um, it has been very hard on our on our HOAs to figure out ways to fund the the water situation at the same time um, fire protection has been thought of as an issue as well. So uh, we have um, on one side of the, of the of Granger Road, we have uh, uh, the lake, which has a dry hydrant, which serves about 100 different homes. And that could be up to you know thousands of feet away from that dry hydrant. On the other side of the lake, there's they have a small reservoir that uh, provides a dry hydrant to is it about 90 homes? Is that correct? 90 homes on the north side of the Granger Road? And that is limited as well. So we feel that in 
the, bringing the water down to the uh, down to our community would help us remediate those water issues and also help us in the future provide better fire protection to our community. Um, we feel that water is a higher priority than, in some cases, the fi uh, internet or fiber. If that's how dire our situations are. This, if, if we lose a well in those other, we, there's four total uh, water treatment plants, eight total wells. If we lose uh, a well in those other treatment plants, again, like I mentioned before, we would be in a bad situation. So I'm asking, uh, again, you know, to approve uh, either one or two, one or two things here. Uh, approve Condo Four's monies to remediate their 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 water situation. Two, and the other option is is to bring water to our community from the city, and then we would also need some financial assistance to help remediate our systems within the community themselves. Uh, uh, can I ask you a couple questions? Sure. So how many how many units are there? In your There's 185 total units in all six HOAs. Is Granger using any of its ARPA money towards your concerns, the township specifically? We don't know. We haven't heard back from the township, right? Is that correct? The 20th. And they were all developed in 71-ish? 71, and they are all under a uh, lake lease where we pay um, yearly into the private owner of, that, of the lake. And basically for 100 years. For 100 years for 100 until years, 2071. And, and adjust it with a CPI every five years. Yes. Which is, is indicated it's uh, uh, has escalated quite a bit. It has escalated to and a point where it's. And will continue to at least until uh, 2071. Yes. Uh, which is very, uh, uh, well, almost predatory in some ways, but I it just Very much so. Yeah, yeah. We would we would agree with that statement. Yeah. Um, I, I, I guess just to, for the public benefit, uh, this is a result of uh, uh, you uh, talking to Jeremy uh, Cinco about uh, moving the water main. As you know, we uh, had already uh, approved uh, ARPA money for uh, Condo Association of Four and Five, four and five. Uh, to uh, mediate their problem to, to specifically for their well system. It did not address the other uh, condos. Uh, hence, uh, uh, Jeremy uh, was asked to attend the uh, trustees meeting and see what their thoughts are about extending that uh, water line. Originally, uh, Sanitary had proposed ARPA funds for the extension of that way back when, uh, but obviously uh, 1.2 million, I believe, was the estimated cost versus the 300,000, uh, that, that, that's a huge difference. Uh, likewise, the, we, uh, were, I think we're, we have been advised very well as to what the condition of four and five is and i know they're under epa orders uh for that uh, uh and aware of their conditions uh, i don't think there has been a lot of discussion or at least not among us uh as to the condition of your system the age where it's at are you under the, uh, similar restrictions and, and we are not under similar restrictions as of today but we've had wells go bad in the past and we're afraid if another well goes bad in those in those different um, treatment plants that we would be under the same regulations and oh. issues with arsenic in the in the community. How far away are your well relatively to the other wells? So, uh, three of the four um, water treatment plants are near Granger Road, and the other is far. The fourth one, Condo Four and Five, is farther away. Uh, how, how much? I mean, are we talking yards or? About a, about a half a mile, about a half a mile into the development. So, um, and that's the another, and, and again, what I'm, what I'm asking for is, you know, help with figuring out the situation. But we are also going to need, if if you do move forward with it, to bring the water down from State Road uh, to us, we're going to need also financial assistance with. Um, the main vaults and connecting up our our, our, our legacy distribution uh, water systems to those main vaults and remediation of old piping it's not lead it is PVC to the to the infrastructure 
So, so, so actually, the gas is, is much beyond the 1.2 million. We, we can bring the water down, obviously. Uh, but then there's also the interconnects and also the improvements in both in, in those systems. Yes. So it would be as a consequence. Uh, so you're talking about much more than. Yep. Understanding when we, d Jeremy, correct me if I'm wrong, if we do normally throughout the county bring a main through the area, the individual homes then pay the tap in fee for their individual homes. That, that's that been sort as, of the as count. As well as any other uh, right. system improvement. Right. Right. So. For that distribution so metering, all that is the responsibility when, of the developer or the. Homeowner. Property, homeowner, so yeah. yeah. Normally, when we we pay for the main to go down, and then the tap-in fees for the individual homes are um, paid for by the homeowners. That's been the standard procedure in the county for a long time. I totally understand that, and mm -hmm. but the, the situation with the land lease has made our financial model incapable of of doing that, of of paying for that. And so the estimate from uh, the capacity charge. For 185 units is about $182,000 in and of itself, and on top of that, the main, we need four main vaults in total, cost $200,000. So that's another $400,000 roughly there. Jeremy, what is the like just average price that a homeowner does pay for a tap-in, an individual tap-in of a want, home? You want to come forward, sir? Yeah. I know we've moved into discussion session, so that's all right. Yeah, that's all right. Um, for a typical house, you're you're probably looking at just from the permitting side. This doesn't count the uh, con the residence contractor to install um, from the right of way to the to the building. You're probably at sixty five hundred bucks, I would say, on average, for one home. Okay. Uh, one of the complications <coughs> of this is uh, it, is the time it would take to build that sixteen inch main going all the way down uh, Granger. Mm -hmm. It will take about a year, correct? I mean, but yeah, you're probably design, you're probably pretty close. Contract, uh, close I would, I'd say three months for design. You got two months for bid, and then the construction. Yeah, you're right, probably pretty close. Right, by the time we actually could effectively connect up anyone, mm -hmm. it'll be Correct. about a year. Where we've got homeowners association, where we've talked to their representatives, uh, we have already approved. They have been waiting, uh, obviously, for the county to go ahead and move forward with those improvements, mm -hmm. and that would be much more immediate. And they right now are in dire straits, as I understand. Um, uh, with their issue, so this actually undermines their ability to, to fix their problem. Can you? Can you? Uh, by waiting a whole year. Yeah. Can you survive another year? Okay. Okay. <coughs> no. No. Well, we're the, the only grants is it's a safety that we're actually they are qualified for. Uh, was it water quality and drinking water uh, grants, uh, and therefore they're also qualified for the ARPA dollars. So it really comes down to is the most likely immediate source or end up being the current federal funding that we've received uh, on down. Uh, in a competitive uh, portion, that they would if they would apply, they're still as a community system still really low on the state list, uh, just by virtue of uh, I'll just say where they live. They live in a very fluent area compared to other parts of the state. And therefore, their their ranking isn't very high when it comes to those kind of projects. Uh, but I, yeah, this but, is not but, a pro. It's not a new problem. It's one that uh, we've been we were approached by representatives from owners of four and five well over a year ago mm -hmm. about this. Uh, they approached uh, Anthony Gonzalez, his office, who referred to us. And then when the ARPA money came, this was a possibility of being able to move forward. Uh, so we've had public meetings on this. This is only within the last week or two that we've actually learned about the uh, uh, one. One, three, and six, I guess it is, right? One, two, three. One, two, three, and six, yeah. <laughs> so anyway, the, the, the remaining part of the Homeowners Association, which obviously uh, escalates the ask for the ARPA from here to way up here. And uh, we only have a finite amount of money, uh, a lot of other projects that are competing on this, and that's why I think the, uh, there's going to have to be a lot more discussion here very quickly, uh, as well as uh, the evaluation of, of the evaluation of, the, of your current system. And it'll be good to see what uh, Granger itself is going to do for you guys on the 20th, correct? That'll be part well, of the discussion. Frankly, uh, well, I, I, as, as it happens, I'm going to be there for the issue regarding Senate Bill 52. Mm -hmm. But And I know Amy uh, uh, met with them uh, regarding, uh, let me see, what was the issue we were there for? <laughs> we were actually there to talk about uh, Granger Lakes. The Granger Lakes, right. Okay, yeah. And uh, so, so I think they're waiting to see what we're going to do. 
but they don't have nearly the magnitude of money that we have received. Do all four water treatment systems have a certificate from, I think it's Ohio EPA, that they are public water systems? Three of the four do. Uh, three of them are class one water systems. Okay. And what's the fourth one? The fourth one is the <coughs> just under the regulations. So not enough units served? Uh, yes, is that correct. Okay. I, go ahead. Additionally, we, we totally understand the, the dire situation at Condo 4 and 5. That needs to be remediated. Long term, though, the, the, the rest of the HOAs don't want to be in the water business. At the same time, we hope that you would approve that $1.2 million to bring that water to the main down. We also hear, um, are hearing about uh, Joe Biden's infrastructure, so maybe there will be some future opportunities as well, but we don't know. Yeah, I, yeah I'm, I know I'm attending a, a teleconference uh, in the near term on more of the uh, rollout of that. I'm unaware of how much involves uh, water, mm -hmm. uh, drinking water infrastructure on that. Like I said, uh, a lot of it's obviously highway roads and broadband, but uh, I, I agree that may be a potential in the future. That's why I think we need to sit down. Um, uh, and uh, we really do need a thorough evaluation of, I guess, Jeremy, that would be in, in uh, your area to kind of sit down and, and if you can pro provide us with some additional, you and Amy provide us with some additional information that we can uh, uh, deal with this over the next couple of weeks, especially in keeping with the, what Ranger Township wants to do um, and see if uh, there's a way to address uh, some of these issues. Um, likewise, like I said, uh, we, we still have the issue with four and five, and, and their more immediate problem is how do we handle that, since we've already approved it. And But it does require, uh, the county was going to take over responsibility of contracting that out, going out for bids, and, uh, and moving forward with that, correct? So, yeah, yeah. So at this point, we just need uh, a quick review, and as, as well as uh, some future discussions with the homeowners associations, and I think a proper evaluation of, uh, of the system. Recognizing that uh, uh, as I understand, there's no planned growth within that area of the township. And so any uh, construction of that extra capacity, that 16-inch main, is predicated on some time in the future to going over and then connecting eventually up to Route 18. But we have no idea when that would occur. Uh, so you have a basically a lot of investment sitting there, not and, and basically, uh, I'll say, underutilized for a very significant period of time. Mm -hmm. Uh, can I, can, yes, go ahead. Just a second. Are you in uh, what? What? Condo five. Okay. So yeah, maybe why don't, why don't you come on up? Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, sure. Just, when, when I come on up, sure. You want to come? It, please. Thank you. I'll, I'll sure. Keep okay. Charles. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. No, my name is Gary Glossner. I'm with Condo Five. All right. And I'm just curious, what the status was on the uh, design? Bid package, all of that that, that the county is doing. Jeremy, you want to advise us? That's why you were having the meeting with the township, was it not? Well, actually, uh, my clients hasn't finished the agreement. Um, oh, got it. Ranger township, that's the agreement. Got it. Okay. And that was the for specifically the four or five project, correct? So that's where we're at right now. I don't know what that means. The, the, the attorney is working on the agreement that would have to occur between us, the county, as well as the, uh, the homeowners association and the township because they were also likely going to be a partner in the funding of this. Since we're all, you, both entities, or, uh, public entities, are utilizing those dollars, they have to comply with the standards of, of those that which require, you know, uh, uh, well, basically, have to go out to bid. You have everything you have to comply with, yeah. and it made sense for both the county and the township to enter an agreement on how those funds were going to be utilized and accounted for, and, and of course, the procurement, uh, the federal procurement requirements were going to be met. And and all of that is before they start doing any design work. And exactly. So exactly. Okay. And my 
concern is that in, in October we were ready to start digging and then we, right. you guys graciously offered to help fund some of that. Mm -hmm. But October was a long time ago. <laughs> yeah. Agreed. Well, and, and I guess that goes back to the question that I asked uh, previously. So our, our, is the association under time constraints by EPA or, or is it the failure of the wells that is of concern? It's a failure of the wells, I believe, right? Yeah. Mike, you want to come forward, please? please. I, I just said my comment. concern is that mm -hmm. we don't show up here in June. Agreed. You know, with the same question. How's everyone playing? Yeah, good, good. Kind of five again. Yeah, it, it, back in August 17th, it was mentioned our immediate concern was time. We are under a serious time constraint. It could happen today. It could have happened in, in August. Thank God it hasn't happened. We've got everything ready to go. We've got the EPA approvals. We've got, um, we're ready to move forward. Um, I thought the cost, I thought it would be out to bid this month. It doesn't look like that's going to happen. Is there some way we can expedite that? And are you thinking about pulling the funds back? No, we were kind of waiting to see. Uh, we're waiting for Granger, correct, to see their contribution towards the project. Okay. Yes, so, so the way the way at this point under the, the current number we've already we've already allocated we've already determined how much of the ARPA money is available. Uh, either the homeowners association comes up with the balance in its entirety, and in which case the agreement is between uh, you and us, or the township also puts money into it, and then the the agreements between the three of us. And so that's what we're ex exactly waiting for. And the township is holding up until the next meeting to make that determination. But of course, in the meantime, we have the issue with the other. Uh, associations coming in that kind of, uh, I guess, uh, holds back moving forward. Uh, and, well, actually, certainly plays into the township uh, decision making. But we're trying to, our county department is trying to evaluate whether it makes sense to move back to the original and how we would do that. So, you know, and also, yeah. you know, it's been five months almost to the agreed. Okay. Cost have probably gone up. $30,000. Where am I going to get $30,000 more to pay for this project that I could have had done last year? Have you talked to the trustees? Yes. Oh, okay. They're waiting to, to meet. Okay. So we're in, a, we're in a holding pattern, you know, and being what Chuck said about bringing the main down, as far as the EPA is concerned, they want that system looped back up. They don't want dead ends. It would benefit our system to create a loop there. Who's going to pay for that frontage? I mean, that's all got to be done too, going up, back up to eight, back up to eight, Medina line up to eighteen. Okay. Our lines, we're, our buildings were built in, in, in the eighties, condo fours, condo fives were built twenty years ago. Okay. Um, our lines are, you know, we're, we're, we've been fortunate we haven't had a whole lot of water main breaks, but if this, our contention also is we put these vaults out there, we're a metered system, we get a water main break and we don't see it for three, four, five days or find out about it, we're master metered off that, we're paying for that water. Right now I'm getting free water. I can absorb the cost of a couple bags of salt to keep our water soft. That main breaks, I'm paying for water that I don't even know where it's going. It, it, it's prohibitive to us to do it that way. Unless we bring a, a, a master line down that, in, in, down there and meter every unit, but that's going to cost six. We don't want to do that. Yeah. I mean, that would, that would make but I, basically, I, I, I guess to explain, you, there's significant costs to the property owners, to the homeowners, even bringing the, the main system down there, uh, turning it into a public water uh, 
uh, system, correct? Other than the, with their current design, they don't have to worry about master metering. They don't have to be metering each of the individual units. If we bring public water down there, they're going to have to have a master meter, and that's what you're referring to, that potentially if there was a break, yeah, basically the homeowners association is the one that pays the bill and responsible for subbing that out under EPA, uh, and I guess there are some specific EPA requirements on when you start subbing out uh, from a master meter, correct? There is. Um, you yeah. Want, yeah. It's Sorry. With the uh, public water system, if uh, I believe it's 20, 20 or 25 units and you sub-meter after a master meter, then you become a public water system. Now, if, if after that master meter, all, let's just say, 30 uh, units there, either paid the same bill, then it's not considered. Or if they pay, I think they can do based on uh, square footage, right? So if you're square footage, you, you could pay proportionally based on square footage. That's another option. But yeah, once you start metering after that uh, master meter, the uh, you, that system would then become a public water system and would fall under the same requirements as we do. Yeah. So I would advise against that if right. possible. Right. <clears throat> So you can see it's, it's pretty complicated moving from mm -hmm. a, a private system to a public, uh, given their current, I mean, you're trans, transferring from one type to another, and of course the law uh, has a hurdles as to doing that. And you don't master meter your current residence, right? Or you don't meter each, or do you? No, we do not. So, yeah, so okay. Okay, well, at, at this point, if we have agreement, I guess, Jeremy, you'll be wor working on this. Uh, the Township Trustees have a meeting on the 20th. Uh, obviously, I'll be attending for other other reasons. And I'm sure this will be part of the conversation, but this is something uh, I guess the board will have to uh, entertain for the next uh, week or two as to how to proceed. Do so, we have a time frame that you can project? Well, only that it's going to be about a month after we understand the agreements have been finalized. If you're going to forego Ranger Township's participation, you can continue moving forward. If it wasn't of the understanding, you wanted to forego Ranger Township's potential participation. Yeah, we went from, you know, when I presented our case that day, you know, I asked them for seventy-five thousand. Go for the go for the top. You can always go down. You can't go up. So that. They, they didn't give us a clue either way. So, either I ask for the money and get it, or they give it to somebody else. That's the way I felt about it. So, anything else, gentlemen? Thank you for your time. I appreciate it. thoughts? Okay. Thank you. Thanks. All right. So, so just as, so I'm clear on what we're going to do. Jeremy, you're going to work on a proposal for taking the water line down so we understand what the cost is? It's 1.25. Okay. Million. Right. Um, then there's additional cost. So well, the, then, now he's talking about the homeowners association's cost of the connects, interconnect, and so forth. Right. And so that would be an additional ask by your group in addition to the 1.2 million for the 1.25 bringing it down to them. So um, the, that, I think that's where Jeremy, we're going to be asking for some uh, estimate there okay. that if we're going to be making that commitment uh, and that's what your ask is for that additional mm -hmm. and uh, likewise if we move forward with the uh, homeowners of f four and five uh, they basically will have an independent uh, community system still operating but not tied into our public system because their need is more immediate and we've already approved it actually correct so yeah <laughs> The stretch of the 1.2 million. There's very few other homes that this this would benefit. This is, just goes right to the condo association. I want to say that there's maybe 10 to 15 properties between State Road and the condo association. That's, that's, that's the 185 house. It's a 16-inch main <laughs> for a very small usage current or even planned at this point their community plan doesn't indicate any large developments within that uh, that area of their township and the only the only real benefit to the system eventually would be connection uh, as, as pointed out eventual connection potentially with route 18 uh, going up Medina line road and, and even looking at looping all the way down to 18 it over double the cost of the thing so I Uh, 
considerable more discussions going to be required here, obviously. So, okay. Evaluation. Any other questions for, okay. Um, still kind of on the public comment. Anybody else in the public comment? Anybody else? I didn't know if everybody's here just with the Homeowners Association. Okay, I guess, I guess so. Okay, in which case we'll go ahead and continue on with our discussion session. Um, I guess, uh, Scott, do you have anything for us? Microphone, please. Microphone, please. Okay, sorry. <laughs> They'll be laying steel. They'll be laying steel tomorrow at the courthouse. So it's going to get delivered and they're going to start laying as soon as it's delivered. I saw the crane this morning. Yeah. Awesome. So, great. Great. Yeah, they actually had a crane in to assemble the crane. Oh. Uh, well, of course. It's quite interesting. Yeah. Yeah, I watched a little bit of it. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's uh, 100 and what we see, 187. It was Make sure we get a lot of pictures, right? Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thanks, good, Scott. good. All right, Amy. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to bring it up for public discussion. Um, every year we are trying to always decide whether or not we need to have a, a meeting that last week of December, you know, and it causes some anxiety with, you know, traveling plans and so forth. So to try to get ahead of that this year for calendar year 2022, we were talking with the auditor's office, and if we put it out there that there's not going to be a meeting that last week of the year, the 27th, we can have everybody plan accordingly, meaning get your invoices in on time. Um, we can move back our budgeting process so that everything just happens a little bit early, er, than has happened in years past, so we can have comfort. We could always ask to have the meeting, I guess, if we have to, but we'd prefer not to. So I just wanted to bring that to your attention and see, you know, are we okay with that moving forward this year? Because the auditor, too, was in support of that, that they could send out um, updates and they'd updated their voucher schedule and everything to try to accommodate that decision if you were so inclined to go in that direction. I am. I, I am, too. And I, I and, and also maybe finance could put it on the calendar to send, like, Reminders. Uh, November 15th reminder to all departments to make sure you, you know, get your invoices in on time. So I, I would say uh, just in January, making plans for next December seems <laughs> really advanced planning, but I think it is good that we're making that decision. And should we need a meeting, we, we could still have one, but it won't be for those purposes. Uh, right. Yeah, that, but we'll, I think with good planning, we can uh, be able to, to accommodate that. So well, thank you for taking care of that. You're very welcome. Well, it's hopeful. It's still in everyone's mind, so right. we can be okay. prepared for this year. Okay. Okay, thank you. Anything else? That's it okay. for me. Jeremy, do you have anything else? Denise? All right. Holly, anything? Steve? Very candy. Okay. Uh, Holly? Yeah, um, I read the, the, uh, remember last month we talked about uh, the contract that Richard has with Wadsworth City regarding... Um, so I reviewed the contract and then I talked um, with um, Richard and he is completely happy with the existing con um, contract as far as prices go. So I um, contacted Robert Patrick. They are currently, they do have, um, are collecting applications right now for the retirement that they have. And um, I expressed to him the possibility of renegotiating the contract so that the building department does take over their services should they not find a candidate that they like. He was very appreciative of uh, the outreach. Um, they are still in the process of collecting applications and he would let me know uh, whether or not they would like to pursue this avenue. Uh, but again, they were appreci uh, very appreciative that we reached out. Super. Thank you. Bill? Um, NOACA, uh, we have, they have the Rural Advisory Council, and uh, we need to have a township representative uh, for that. Um, and for the past several years, it's been Brian uh, Gushin, and uh, I believe Denny Miller is the alternate, but um, they have not participated um, uh, at all. And um, so I just wanted to inform, I'll contact uh, Jeff Brandon. I believe the, the new president of the Township Association mm -hmm. and ask him for uh, a name or two and then we need to provide it to NOACA by Friday so okay. I'll, just, uh, I'll get the name and uh, and relay it on. That's, I just wanted to let you know if you have two. any issues then two names, a primary and an alternate and um, 
we'll go from there. Now, D Denise is the other member of that she, representative. Uh, she is, and she attends. And, and, and she does attend. She's, she's very attends. good, yes. And her, her and I actually had a yeah. conversation about this yesterday. And looking at the agenda items on for that specific committee, uh, it caused me to ask is what the purpose of the committee is, because there's other other committees that have the same agenda. And in some ways, I, I wonder, be, now when it was a Zoom, it was a lot easier for people to attend. Right. Now that it isn't as for their committees, you're now taking the trip in, in Cleveland, uh, downtown, which is, you know, it kind of seems somewhat ironic that a, a rural advisory committee is ha having to meet in uh, downtown Cleveland. Uh, but be that as may, that uh, uh, their, uh, their agenda, uh, I guess, might question the meaning, uh, how meaningful it really is. Uh, their advisory, but when you look at the items that they're reviewing, um, they seem rather like, I'm not sure what the Im input of the committee actually is. And I'm kind of question maybe some of the members have kind of sense that, like, well, uh, those of us that are elected officials, you make your choices or what important meetings you can miss and ones you can't, and maybe that has uh, uh, part of the, the rationale. So my question comes down to is, what does that committee actually do, and how does it fit into the overall planning process for the, for the organization, for no end? It, it is strictly an advisory uh, committee that, that provides input. I mean, whatever their on concerns what? are. <laughs> uh, is the question on a rural on a rural perspective of whatever it is yeah. that that, yeah. Uh, okay. that Noack is working on. That's yeah. all I can tell you. So, I, I just wonder if there's a, is a way to for the, even though it's a committee, can they could they meet with Zoom? I don't think so. Okay, so even as a committee, they if, could if not since they're even though they're advisory. Would, I know. I agree. Would, uh, Fix the law, they could, but uh, I, I, don't I don't mind. Men under, I don't believe under the current law that any public body can be. Do the re can the representatives be um, anybody from anywhere in the county, or do they have to be from more rural townships? I don't think it makes any difference necessarily. Okay. I mean, a township by its nature is rural, so um, for the most part, yeah, I don't think it makes any difference. Um, yeah, we have a question. Yes. Well, that'd be, that, that might be helpful. Sure, sure. Okay. What township do you live in? Well, not the township. Well, she, she, but she works for an agency that does represent the township, so maybe that would be, uh, if you will, adequate. Okay. Virtual representation, so to speak. Yeah. But I, I, I knew the answer that the, uh, uh, regarding the attendance, but it's nice to always mention, I think, to the general public, uh, our dissatisfaction with the change in law. That does not allow virtual virtual meetings for for advisory groups. That it just makes perfectly perfectly good sense to have everybody and the public attend and watch these things, rather than have them in a, in a location that is hard for people to get to, uh, for meetings that maybe only last at the most maybe an hour. It's much more efficient to allow. That. It takes you longer to get there and get back than it does for a meeting. I know, and, and hence the frustration. Right. Yeah, I know, but it's not bad to keep mentioning that. So, all right. <laughs> so, do you have? Oh, okay, all right. I don't have anything in particular. Um, I have already spoke of what I had. Okay, good, good. Well, I think we're and we don't have any executive session or anything. So, um, I'll entertain a motion to. Adjourn. I will make a motion to adjourn. Second. Move to second. Roll call, please. Swedek. Yes. Hudson. Yes. Hambly. Yes. Uh, thank you, and everybody have a good week. See you next week. I bet Bill moved.